Hey everybody, it's Jason Blaha here. Now that my two obligatory informative videos are done for the day, it's time to talk about current events in the online fitness community. And today I figure let's just go ahead and just once a week, let's just go through and uh, discuss nonsense by V Shrunk or just bad biomechanics. So let me put on my plus five hat of weaponsmithing, work on skilling my crafting a little bit, and let's talk about this. Now, you know, you've got someone like V-Shrunk, and he's kind of turning into the whipping boy of the YouTube fitness uh, this year. Kind of everybody's calling him out. Everybody's calling him out. And it's because the guy has zero knowledge of biomechanics. He doesn't know what the muscles do in the body, doesn't know their functions, their names, anything else. Uh, you see tons of this, and yet he's got this excessive focus on isolation and all these little fine-tuning exercises with no knowledge of how to perform the basics. I'm sorry, but if you don't know how to perform a basic bench press or a barbell squat, you probably shouldn't be teaching other people how to train. Just gonna throw that out there. Uh, but the thing is, when it comes to all these little fluff and pump movements he does, half the time he can't even get those right. And I watched and he did a whole video on cable arm work. It's like a 12 minute video just discussing exercises you can do like it. And basically, I guess he broke it down as a workout uh, gave you reps and sets and exercises in order uh, to develop your arms, but he didn't even know what he's doing. And in fact, there's real problems even with what he taught. And I'm not saying some of this isn't commonly used by bodybuilders, but bodybuilders you also see running around screaming about their tendonitis and their elbows and everything hurting all the time too. You know, bodybuilders don't exactly have the healthiest of connective tissue as a result of some of this nonsense. And a lot of it's the stuff he's teaching. Uh, and what's interesting, you know, is, is again, this excessive focus on isolation movements. Now, some people are going to be like, well, Jason, I think you need some isolation. You know what? I, if, if that's your prerogative, that's cool. I'm not going to tell you how to live your life. If you feel that after your real work, your heavy work, that you need some type of curl and some sort of tricep extension to maximize your development, then more power to you. But what I would suggest is that, you know, at least pick them wisely. Don't just pick random crap to do for these small muscles, right? You should probably pick something that's going to, number one, not cause too much inflammation in your tendons, right? Number two, maybe stimulate the muscle in a way that you're not getting from your other exercises. If you feel that chin-ups and rows are leaving something out of the equation for your bicep, then you might want to find a curl uh, that does handle the element of that muscle that you think you're missing. Same thing with a tricep extension, right? If you feel that you need extra tricep work, it's probably because you think one of the three heads is getting maybe not enough development from your exercise choices. Uh, I mean, that's reasonable. I would hope you guys are thinking that way. If you're going to go through all this trouble to add in this fluff and pump, you might as well add something in that might help you and isn't going to hurt you. I mean, and that's, that's reasonable. That's reasonable. If you do that, then I have no problem with someone throwing in a curl and a tricep extension in their training. You know, knock yourself out. Uh, and, you know, if you feel it works for you, then hey, go for it. So I'm not going to be dogmatic about it, but the point is we get to, uh, you know, not only does you have all this silly focus on eccentric reps and isometrics, which don't always, you know, add what you really want in terms of even hypertrophy, but really his tricep stuff is what really bothers me the most. The tricep stuff is a problem uh, because what he is teaching is basically what causes tendonitis down here and these two tendons in the elbow right there in the tricep on the lateral and medial head of the tricep the stuff that he's teaching will cause inflammation and sometimes even calcium deposits on those tendons and so you see all these bodybuilders who wear elbow sleeves after 10 15 years of training at that's why it's because of the crap he's doing and he's leaving Gains on the table. Uh, it's like he's afraid to train the long head of his tricep, and I think it's because he doesn't know that it exists. Uh, and what I mean by that, what I would say to people is normally, you know, your big compound movement should handle stuff. And it's generally understood that if you do nothing but bench press and close grip bench press for your triceps, it's not uncommon for the long head of the tricep, this big head back here, to lag, right? It's, not, it's pretty common because the tricep has two basic functions. And granted, you can't work just part of a muscle, but you can certainly emphasize a part of a muscle. Tricep extends the elbow, and it's involved in shoulder extension. Like, so when you pull down like that, that involves the long head of the tricep more than the other two. It doesn't really do much for them. So usually, if you're doing nothing but chest presses, the long head 
might not get maximally developed. The, the other two heads actually tend to grow really, really, really well from heavy benching or volume bench pressing. Uh, they grow really effectively. Long head might be lagging. But there are other exercises, there are compound movements that hit the long head. The problem is that the way he does them, he skips the range of motion that actually helps with the long head. Uh, Pull-ups and chin-ups actually work the long head of your tricep, even though you think of them as back, bicep, rear delt exercises, right? That's what we think of them as. They do work the long head of the tricep at the bottom, at the bottom of the exercise. Notice he skips the bottom on all these pull-ups he does, and actually pull-ups biomechanically might can put a little more stress on the, on the, the tricep than the chin-up does. Chin-up is tremendously better for the bicep, uh, but the long head on a pull-up with that pronated grip can actually put a nice good stretch and actually some serious work on that. He skips the bottom, so he doesn't actually get that stretch involved, right? He skips it. Same thing, he goes to do overhead pressing, and I always tell guys, you know, again, the long head of your tricep will get more activation on a proper overhead press than it will on your bench press. That's one reason the overhead press, it's a couple different muscles. The overhead press really works better than the bench press, like with a barbell, standing one. Uh, they can really help fill in some gaps for you. And I'm not just talking aesthetically, I'm talking from a muscle balance and performance perspective. Because lagging muscles are not ideal for strength athletes either, are they? I don't care whether you're a power lifter or a football player or anything else, having major lagging muscle groups probably isn't a good idea, right? We can all agree on that. I mean, there's there's a something to be said for having balanced musculature. Well, if you come down and touch the chest on the press, it tends to work the upper chest and the long head of the tricep more than might otherwise get done. He stops short. All his presses is like this. He stops really, really short. So his long head gets completely neglected. So it, you would think, because granted, he sucks at the bench press too, but you would think that someone who's doing all that might say, well, maybe I should do some stuff for my long head. He goes out of his way on all four of these tricep exercises to avoid activating the long head. He specifically goes out of his way to do it. Why? He's always keeping the elbows fixed. In other words, wherever you start with the elbows, you, it's this, right? He's in it behind the head, it's, it's this, there is no movement. He's keeping everything completely strict so that there is no movement of the shoulder. Anyone who knows basic biomechanics is laughing right now. Because if you do any sort of tricep extension to where at the top you let, like up here, let's say you're going to do a cable, I'm not big on cables, but if you do it and you come up, what just happened right there? The long head handles that part, and then you're getting more activation of the lateral and medial head on the rest of it. But if you're just doing this, you're not getting that stretch on the long head. And the same thing, he does it even behind the head, which might stretch the long head, but it stays stationary. So he's reducing the activation there. He's reducing the activation. So his long head's never getting worked. It's not getting worked, bro. Be shrunk. That's why you don't have a long head to your tricep. Now, if you bodybuilder types, that's probably not good. I mean, maybe a long head, like a long head of a tricep for a strength athlete, someone like me is not the end of the world. And we don't particularly use it on the bench press now. We use it on the overhead press. So if you want to be strong on the press, you know, that that muscle will need to come up. But, and for all, sorry, a lot of noobs there. Press is a standing overhead press trick. That, that's called the press. That is the historic name of that exercise. Not called a military press. It's not called a standing barbell press. It's just called the press. When you start adding other words, you're, you're, you're doing a different lift. Uh, but we just call it the press. Yeah, the, the press will use the long head of the tricep. And it, it does need to be strong in order to do that lift and be good at it. But he avoids training it. He avoids training it. The worst part, the keeping the elbows tucked in and always doing this, what people need to understand also, that is not a natural position. There's a reason you feel the need to use that inertia. It's because it is not a natural position for your elbow and for your tricep down here to have the elbows tuck in and just move and isolate that joint. Why? Because what happens when you're doing, there's no movement you would do that in the real world. It requires almost machines or laying down with a barbell. It requires you to go out of your way to put yourself in this unnatural position. What happens is that when you get the stretch here and you're tucked in tight, it causes instead of a movement to where there's some movement and you relieve the stress there, and it maybe it goes to the long head, it puts all the stress here. And what happens is that these tendons rub against the bones of your elbow, and they, they get friction against the bone. 
Well, over time, that can cause inflammation on the underside of those tendons. And in the worst case, when you have chronic inflammation that you just keep re-inflaming, uh, that doesn't get to heal properly, and particularly if it's, if it's a movement pattern you're not really quite intended to do, which again, a lot of isolation movements and machines can create that movement pattern that you would struggle to create outside of that environment. Uh, so again, it should tell you something. If you need to use a, a weird device or something in order to put the body into a certain movement pattern, in many cases, that might be an indication that your body's not really intended to do that. And in that case, it puts a wear on that tendon because that ten, those tendons never intended to be used that way. It's not a normal movement pattern that we would have evolved to do. Uh, so there's no real protective measure in regard to that in that case. And it rubs against them. And if that inflammation becomes chronic, you can get calcium deposits on those tendons, which are gonna hurt the rest of your life. You might have to get them removed in order to make the pain go away. And then when that happens, guess what? Your bench press hurts, your dips hurt, everything hurts because now you have calcium deposits on the tendons that rub against the bones on every rep at that point because they then protrude larger out and they're, they're, the tendon is now has a larger bump on it as a result of those calcium deposits uh, and that can grate against the bone and be painful and discomforting. So that's effectively what he's causing. Uh, and we don't even need to get into the whole nonsense of trying to come up with cheat curls with an eccentric base thing on a cable. Damn, bro. I mean, if you want to do cheat curls, can't you just find a bar? There's not a bar anywhere in your gym. Alrighty. Alright, guys, but that's really all I have to say on that today. I hope it's been informative, and I will talk to you guys next time.